there's nothing there. Your Grace, I know you have long tired of my words, but please believe me when I say you've merely let your worries get to your head. The society has never caused trouble for you or any of the guards of the fortress. We've spent all of our time working hard and trying to lead better lives. Why are you doing everything in your power to prove our guilt? What's wrong with the current state of affairs? I'll do anything for you, as long as you give me the word. Why are you so intent on getting rid of someone who's been unfalteringly loyal? Your words bore me. You know the consequences if I find you to be lying. Everything that I do, I do for the Fortress of Meripede. But your grace is welcome to visit us any time to confirm the true intent of our activities. All right, Avis. Let's head back. shown him his place. Sooner or later, all will pay the price for their arrogance. Oh, he must have been well prepared for this exact scenario, or he wouldn't have dared to be so openly hostile. All the more reason for us to be patient. The entire society are his hostages. His subordinates would definitely react if he were taken into custody. And that's why he dared to bare his fangs right in front of me. The true secret of the society is neither on the hat nor on the members' heads. Dugier probably knew this from the very beginning, which is why he didn't panic. However, if we were to look at the rules, it would also seem like the head has to be the place where they're keeping all of their secrets. Yeah, none of this makes sense to Paimon either. What are they trying to hide? The hats are definitely being used to hide a secret. But there's nothing wrong with the hats themselves. I need to think about this a bit more. Just what? But if there's nothing on her head, why did Avis feel the need to remove her hat? The way Dugier acted, he must have known from the beginning that we wouldn't be able to find any evidence. I need to think about this. I need to think about. I have an idea, but. You mean, this thing? So, she handed a key piece of evidence over to us without Dugier noticing. That would mean that Avis didn't stay silent out of fear. She stayed silent because she'd already given us what we needed. Let me take a look. I managed to remove this from the hair clip. It's long, slender, and conical, it's hollow on the inside, and looks something like a cross between a nail and a thorn. Uh, Paimon's last again. Let's see. What if we do this? Hey, what are you doing? Uh, wait. Some kind of dark liquid is leaking out of the gem. Some of it has been absorbed by this thorny-looking thing. You've probably heard before that water is filled with the strongest emotions of humanity. With that in mind, this liquid is probably a highly concentrated solution of fear. Oh, so that's why even touching it will make you remember unpleasant things. Dugier would be able to censure others. I can only imagine how it would feel to have this directly injected into your brain. The moment it hits you would be 
like being flooded with all the terrors you've ever experienced in your life. Agony, desolation, and an overwhelming sense of despair. No wonder they're all so terrified of it. So, was the hat meant to cover up their wounds? And that might not even be all. Let's go get them right away. We can't let Dujier escape with all of the evidence. Your Grace, we have taken the Society members into custody. They all tried to flee just a little while ago, as if they had received some kind of order. We decided to forestall their plan, and were just about to send the word when you unexpectedly arrived. Great work, everyone. You had prepared for something like this all along? I had them stay here to keep an eye on things, so I'm glad that my intuition turned out to be correct. Perform a thorough search of the Society's headquarters and bring all the members to me. Understood, Your Grace. Now, let's check on them. As expected, they all have a hollow thorn inserted into a wound on their head. Ooh! Paimon's glad her eyesight isn't so good that she can see it from here. I... Paimon's gonna float away for a bit. They probably left it there as a lasting reminder of Dujier's censure. These people must have had to endure an unimaginable amount of pain. Let's go check out the other areas, too. Look at what I found. This is a surveillance port. With this, Dujier would be able to remotely monitor everything that's happening at the gathering place. So even if Dujier's not there in person, he'll still always have eyes on the members. Indeed. It's easy to become lost and confused when you're given no instructions or any kind of script to follow. And if any action you take may be deemed a mistake, then perhaps it's better to do less, or to not do anything at all. Dujier has already tamed them to his will.
Your Grace! Your Grace! What's the matter? We couldn't find any society members in the other areas. It also seems like none of the equipment in those rooms were ever used. All the signs of wear and tear are fake. The lime scale, the layers of dust, they were all deliberately added. We also investigated the members' residences and weren't able to find anything. Their neighbors all say that they haven't returned home for ages. Oh... Is that right? They're gone? That could only mean... Indeed. As long as he allowed society members to mingle with others, even with threats of censure, Dujie knew that he couldn't stop all of his members from speaking out. Meanwhile, this marvelous gathering place will lose all of its value as soon as a whistleblower sounds the alarm. So instead of being his real base, this is just an elaborate performance. The rest areas, the fancy equipment, even the members that we saw, they were merely part of the front. And only the most docile and well-trained members were selected as his performers. But then, where can we actually find him? <sighs> Let me think. Dujie must be holding all the rest of his members in another place. And if the Overseer of my Fortress Guard has never alerted me to anything of the sort, he must be in Dujie's pocket. I'm of the same mind. Let's go. You too, follow me. I once considered keeping some pets in my op. Did that person flee here? That's the most likely scenario to me. He's probably already caught wind of Dugier's declaration of war against me, and has fled to seek his protection. Let's keep heading down. There are some abandoned areas in there. Since he needs space, I'd guess Dugier probably converted them into his headquarters. We should be on the right track. Now we just need to find that turncoat. Let's go. We can take this path. You guys take the other. Blasted guards! <sighs> did Dugier send you? Why did you attack that guard? <sighs> Come on! It's time to talk! Can't you see that he's trying to help? I will take your cooperation into consideration when it comes time to hand out sentences. But Mr. Dugier, he, he didn't want this guy to expose our true location. We were just about to dispose of him when you caught up to us. So, in other words, your headquarters should be this way. Yes, it's just down this way. You'll make it there once you've seen it pass through a large drainage pipe.
Guards, take them away. Let's go. It's about time that we find out what Dugier is really after. There's so much space down here. Yeah, these are all former work areas. They've been left abandoned due to a lack of funds. There are usually guards on patrol here. It would seem that all of those guards have been bought as well. Stay sharp. He's got a ton of surprises waiting for us, I'm sure.
Right here. Right now. A moment, please. <laughs> safe now. Just follow the guards and leave this place. Who knew that there'd be Gardamax here? Doji ain't really prepared for everything! And that would explain the strange decommission requests I received, as well as account for all the Gardamax that had mysteriously gone missing. Seems like he's prepared for an all-out confrontation with me. Hey, what's this? Seems like some kind of handbook. Let me see. Ah, this should be the Society's real rules book. It lists all the rules that they're expected to follow. Members are not permitted to speak to each other or to leave without formal permission. Five members shall form a group, and the whole group will be punished for any single member's wrongdoings. Anyone who reports a fellow member's misbehavior shall be rewarded with food and water. I see. So it's much as I expected. But that's just cruel and unreasonable. To obtain food and water, prisoners are forced to snitch on others, and in the process cause pain to those around them. To avoid punishment, they learn to stop talking with one another. This leaves the wounds they've already received to fester, however. And so resentment builds, until every prisoner has become an island. Finally, isolated and without hope, they accept their fate as Dujier's slaves. Do you remember what happened to Paimon? She rejected all the snacks in the box once she was spooked by that black gem. She's usually all for tasty snacks, but she chose to go against her instincts after a negative experience. Ugh, is that the best example you could come up with? Anyway, Paimon still thinks she made the right decision, and never hurts to be careful. No, your decision was valid. However, it's also valid to interpret that as a decision that you only made under emotional duress. The human heart is like a raft in a vast and empty ocean. We convince ourselves that we're in control, but in truth, a single wave could sweep us off course and send us crashing into the path of a storm. Those who use fear to lead others astray must pay for that crime.
If I'm not mistaken, the space ahead should be the central area of this place, but the door has been locked. Rather than confront Dujier, I think it's more important right now for us to rescue as many society members as possible. You guys should wait here. We'll try to open the door and check out some other spots. Open the door? Would we have to do something to this mechanism here? Ugh, Paimon doesn't get it at all. Forget it, Paimon's just gonna do some trial and error. Stabilize! Right here. Let's begin. Stay cool and face your guilt! Activate the mechanism in front of us first, just like before. Let's see if that changes anything. 
<laughs> Looks like there's a mechanism that's gotten stuck. It won't turn alongside the others. Uh, is there something we can do? If you ever see any stickers on my back, do me a favor and take them off. Malazines like to play pranks sometimes. These should be the prison cells. Hmm. Lots of empty cells in here. Dugier's probably moved them elsewhere already. Let's still rescue the ones who got left behind, though. Every person counts! be able to get through to her right now. Not with the stress response in the way. I'd also guess there are many others here who are more or less like her. Let's let the guards take care of them for now and keep pushing forward. I once considered keeping some pets in my office, but soon gave up on the idea. It's just not right to keep small animals where they won't be able to see the sun. Open. 
Huh. Maybe it's his grace. I'll go take a look. I leave this area to you. Make sure to bring everyone out safe. Understood. And please take care as well, your grace. We'll return here right away and await your orders. Mm-hmm. Just focus on the tasks you've been given. I already have reliable help over here. Let's go back. We have unfinished business, do we not? That mechanism from the first room. Maybe we'll also need to hold it in place using the same device to open the door that leads to the central area. Don't forget to bring these along. I must confess to being furious. To think that there are still some of you who find it permissible to spit upon our rules. Remember their names. Fasal and Avis. They've betrayed you, betrayed us. And today you will see with your own eyes what'll happen to those who betray our cause. Go on, Avis. Pierce his skull with the thorn in your hands, and then push in the Aqua Dolores. Of course, you will do it one drop at a time. Let it do its magic again and again, and don't stop until you've pushed all of it in. That's all. I'm sorry. It... it's okay. I'll... find a way to endure. Oh, shut your wretched mouths! When did I give you permission to speak? My rules are the paramount law of this place! Only more pain will come to those who dare to disobey! That's enough, Dugier. Your rabid screams have been beyond nauseating. <gasps> Is that... His Grace? Oh, Risley. I knew you would come, but I didn't expect you to be so quick. Must you still refuse to let me be? Did I not spell everything out for you already? What's so blasphemous about sharing a slice of the cake with me when you've already got the entire fortress at your feet? It would seem that you can't see the difference between sharing and looting. And on top of that, 
Look at your people. Are they not starving as you wolf down your cake? You. Stop acting all high and mighty like some hero of justice! Have you forgotten? Nobody in this blessed fortress is innocent! We are all irredeemable monsters who have destroyed something that others held dear. What's so wrong about punishing those who deserve to be punished? It's what they've always deserved. And please, are you really gonna tell me that you care about their lives and well-being when you just need a supply of labor to keep this place running? Is it that all you need to keep your cushy life? Sadly, you're wrong on both counts. Unlike you, I've never seen them as currency. The fortress is not only a place for confinement, but also a place for rebirth. Just as people are free to give in to the darkness within their hearts, they are also free to seek redemption and a new beginning. Our bodies have limits, but our spirits will always remain free. They may have made mistakes, but they are still human beings with people and things that they cherish. And most importantly, they should always retain the freedom to choose their own path once they've reflected on their past misdeeds. But you, you're destroying their spirits with fear, taking their freedom away so that they'll become slaves who will never again feel or think. And you say that's what they've always deserved? You are nothing compared to them. He... he's really mad. You think me arrogant, Risley. Well, I think you're too young and naive. You understand nothing of this world. Nobody actually sees this fortress as any kind of just a wonderful place. See it for what it is. A dumping ground of pain and misery, irredeemable now and irredeemable forever! No prisoner will listen to you out of gratitude of their hearts. The whip is the only way to make them obey. Had you been just one step slower, I would have already taken control of all the garden mechs in this place. Your vision gives you strength. But how long will it hold against these powerful constructs? <laughs> you talk big, but in the end, you know nothing outside of power and control. In that case, let me give you a small taste of what real power looks like. I will have order! Gather! Right now! Emerge! A sight to behold! This could get a little chilly! Right now. <laughs> if you think fear can control everything, well then, terrify me. Don't high road me. You're just another crook. And it's time he got treated like one! <laughs> 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 What's the matter? Too scared to shoot straight? I I'm warning you! Unauthorized punishment and torture are prohibited here! As the Duke, you should set an example! Funny how that slipped my mind. Well, from this point on, you can forget about that rule. The rules of the fortress are there to keep the likes of you in check. But if the Duke wants somebody dead, he needs no justification. Understood. <laughs> 
Sorry for taking so long. Did I keep you waiting? No, not at all. Paimon didn't know you were so considerate. <laughs> if you ask me, I'd say I actually feel very helpless. There's no way that I could truly empathize with the fear that the members felt every day. I could comfort and compensate them all I want, but it might still not be enough to repair the damage that has been done. I have to take responsibility for it, as does the fortress. Yeah, it's the least that we could do. So, do you have a plan for how you're gonna deal with him yet? Oh, Dugier? I've already got an idea. For now, I think I'll do nothing. Huh? Why? I think it's a very fitting punishment for him to have to imagine the sorts of punishments that will soon be coming his way. He'll be left in the dark with regards to both the dates and the details of his punishment. Of course, that's not to say that I'll be letting him off scot-free. It's not often that I actually get the chance to be creative with my punishments. I'm going to talk to the members of the society. He'll get a chance to experience everything that he's ever inflicted on them. Paimon didn't know you could also be so harsh! Looks like she should watch her tongue when she's around you in the future. Why do you think I'd do that kind of thing to you? You offend me, Paimon. Anyway, jokes aside, thank you so much for all of your help. There's still a lot for me to take care of, so... How about this? I'll treat you to a meal in two days at the Coupon Cafeteria. We should have a better handle on things by then. Uh, no, Paimon's had enough of that place. Don't worry, it won't be the same old welfare meal. I'll make the necessary arrangements. Oh, then you've got yourself a deal! Every journey has its final day. Don't rush. Ah, you're here. Paima never forgets about meals. Even if the traveler forgets, Paima will remind her for sure. Meant right? Hmm? I'm a little confused, actually. Hey, not you too! Jokes aside, I've got some good news. After taking a look, the doctors have let me know that it shouldn't be too difficult to extract the thorns. Which means that everyone should be able to recover after a period of rest. As for their mental recoveries, most are making good progress as well. We've added a few who were more severely affected to a special observation list. You sure got everything taken care of, Risley. I try my best. After all, it's my duty to take care of everything that happens within my territory. Please, go ahead. Ah, that's a bit of a long story. I once had a similar experience. It had to do with the host family I lived with as a child. I was an orphan, adopted by a couple with a great deal of love in their hearts. 
I had many siblings, and we all adored each other. Once we were older, Mom and Dad would turn us over to be individually adopted by families of greater means, and go on to adopt more young children. They were perfect parents. Or so I thought. And then? And then, I found out we were merely raised as livestock. Once we had reached a certain age, our parents would bring us to the market for sale. All children that were sold would leave the house, and nobody would know what became of them. As for those who didn't sell, they were merely disposed of. Did you know I once considered myself an extremely lucky child? And all of my friends, all of my siblings, they all felt this way as well. I was also not the first to find out about the truth. All those who found out before me were simply added to the disposal pile. I could never shake the feeling of irony every time I juxtaposed their tragic ends against our parents' adoring smiles. Yes, like the society, my parents created a facade of joy, lied to satiate their desires, and even employed incredibly cruel methods to keep their grasp on power. They did all of that, but never considered how their actions would utterly ruin all the children they took under their wing. Worse, perhaps they never cared about that at all. But I did. So in the end, I killed them and set all of the remaining children free. I was convicted for my crimes and exiled to the fortress of Meripede. Ah. My methods were extreme. Yes, but I was still a teenager at the time. I'd been betrayed by those I trusted most, and I didn't think that more moderate ways would solve the problem. My doubt and helpless anger pushed me forward until I got what I deserved. It's all right. You don't have to tell me what you think. I've already committed to this path, regardless of what anyone may say about it. The least I can do is to make sure that the same tragedy will not happen again in my new home. Sorry to disturb you, everyone. Oh, it's a decent facade. Are you two feeling better yet? It was all because you arrived in time. I managed to escape unscathed. We came here on impulse today, because we were hoping that you'd be able to lend us a hand, Your Grace. Please, go on right ahead. I'll do my best to help. Within reason, of course. It's... <clears throat> I'd like to be wedded to Avis here at the fortress. You're getting married? Yeah, we met each other through the society and both fell into Dugier's trap. But even during our time there, we never doubted each other. We always believed that Dugier was manipulating us, trying to make us mistrust each other. And after this incident, we've come to believe that we've found the one for the rest of our lives. <laughs> you could say we managed to make the best out of a bad situation. He didn't abandon me, and I didn't forsake him either. But we're still both prisoners. And we also aren't sure if the fortress is the best place to host something so celebratory. So we are just wondering, is our request a bit too out of line? Hmm. You're right in that the fortress has never hosted a wedding before. But that's no reason to say no, is it? I'll help you make the arrangements. If you need anything special shipped in from the surface, just say the word. Oh, we can't thank you enough, Your Grace. We are actually also planning to stay here after the conclusion of our sentences. Yeah, we've already made tons of special memories here. So now, it'd be too hard to leave. And we have full confidence in the fortress's future with you at the helm, Your Grace. Your trust is the highest form of praise. Hey, loosen up a bit! Shouldn't you be the happiest man in Tevat to hear that people would like to stay of their own free will? Yeah. I'll always take a genuine expression of faith over any obligation to obey. 